Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and today I want to show you how to make dowel deck beam joints for a skin on frame kayak. Now when I first got started in skin on frame I was making all dowel deck beams and I eventually switched over to mortise and tenon and what I realized is that dowel deck beams weren't quite as simple as I thought they were going to be and mortise and tenon wasn't nearly as difficult as I'd assumed. And the reason for that is because a dowel deck beam needs to be fitted extremely precisely to be strong enough in skin on frame whereas a mortise and tenon joint can be a lot looser and still be strong enough and if there's any issues with the fit it's a lot easier to modify. So in my in-person classes and in my online classes, I teach all mortise and tenon joinery, but I think there's still a really strong place for dowel deck beam joinery in a skin on frame kayak. For somebody who, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to deal with the complexity of learning mortise and tenon joinery, or for somebody who wants to add a deck beam to the kayak after the fact. And this is something that I do all the time, especially in my Greenland kayaks, because I've found that there's almost no way to get the footrest deck beam in exactly the right position without having the paddler sit inside of the finished frame. So in that case, we have the person sit inside, we mark the deck beam, and then we put it in with dowels. I'm going to show you how I make these, and maybe in the future I'll put up another video showing how I do my mortise and tenon joinery, because I think I've come up with probably the cleanest, simplest system out there to do it. But for right now, let's focus on dowel deck beams. So let's just go over the tools I'm going to use for the process really quick. This is a small Japanese saw. I've got a hammer, a pruning shears, a combination square, a pencil and a pencil sharpener, some artificial sinew, a needle, a drill with a drill bit that's slightly under a quarter inch, some quarter inch dowel stock, some deck beam stock, a couple of engagement clamps, and here I've got a radius plane. This is optional. You could just use sandpaper. So I'm going to add an extra deck beam to this completely finished kayak frame here. This boat is a little bit bigger than the ones I normally build, so I feel like it could benefit from just a little bit more stiffening in the area back here. So I'm going to take my deck beam stock, lay it across the gunnels, and then I'm going to use my engagement clamp to go ahead and clamp this down. Anytime you're clamping these deck beams in place, you want to make sure you're not clamping too hard because that could distort the shape of the gunnels of the deck beam. Now I'm going to use a little block to carry the angle of the gunnel up onto the deck beam itself. Now it should be pretty intuitive that if you were to put a block against the gunnel like this and then trace the outside of that block all the way around, you would have a perfect impression of the angle of the gunnels. But the problem with that is, is that that deck beam would then be too wide and if you pushed it down into place it would actually spread the gunnels apart. So what we need to do is actually carry this angle up accurately, but have a subtraction factor on either side so that when you're finished, it sinks as deep as it needs to down into the kayak. And in this case, I just use the block itself as the subtraction factor. So for instance, this is one of my designs and this block is about 5 16 thick. And I'm going to go ahead and just lay it against the gunnel like this. And I'm going to mark to the inside of the block. So there's about 5 16 inches of space between the line that would be carried up off the gunnel and the actual line that I'm making. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and connect those lines across the top and across the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And I'm going to cut this angle with a Japanese saw. Now, when you're setting yourself up to make these kind of cuts, you want to make sure that you're set up nice and ergonomically. The better this is and the more natural it is with your body, the less chance that you're going to make a cut at a weird angle. So now I'm going to test the fit of the deck beam into the kayak. And the first thing I see here is that this deck beam is sitting up too high in the gunnels. And that's because my subtraction stick here was just a little bit too thin. And so if this was a kayak that I needed to have this be in an exact location, I would probably make this a little bit thicker and then I would remark and rebuild this deck beam. But in this case, because the location of this isn't critical, I can just go ahead and slide this forward and it'll sink right down to where I need it to be. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually check the fit. With any butt jointed dowel deck beam, you have to have perfect fitting all the way around. 
So right now I'm seeing that there's just a little bit of a gap back here. So this is exactly why I really don't like to do butt jointed deck beams any more than I absolutely have to, because in this case, I need to take a 16th of an inch off of this corner right here without rounding the corner over and without disturbing the entire plane of the end of this deck beam. And that's not exactly the easiest thing to do. The way that I do it is I clamp down a piece of sandpaper to a table like this and I use both hands and typically just pull it like that. And the reason that I have to do it this way is because if you just try to rub it with sandpaper in midair, I guarantee that you will end up rounding this over and everything that you try to do to make it better is just going to make it fit worse. So let's try to fit this in here again and I'm setting it in place and I still have the exact same problem that I just tried to fix. So we're going to go back to the sandpaper now. And I have still got that same damn problem. So we're going to go back to the sandpaper again. I still have a gap at the back here and I've actually made this worse. There's now a gap at the bottom as well. So I just went ahead and remarked this deck beam and I cut about a half of an inch off it. So instead of this sitting a little bit in front of the intended location, now it's just going to sit a little bit in back of the intended location. And that's fine for this because the location doesn't matter. But if this were a deck beam that needed to stay in the same place, you would actually have to cut a new deck beam if you had made a mistake like that. So it looks like I've got good contact all the way around the shoulder on this side. And I'm still not 100% happy with this side, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm going to go ahead and peg this in place. So I'm going to make four dowels here. I've got my quarter inch dowel stock and my pruning shears. And I'm just using my combination square to set the length. And these are an inch and three quarter long. And now I'm just going to briefly spin these in the end of the pencil sharpener. I'm not looking to make them pointy like a pencil. I'm just looking to break the edges on one end a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour myself some wood glue here so I can glue these in place. Just a little bit of wood glue. So I just went ahead and broke all four edges of this with that radius plane. You could use sandpaper for this as well. I just find it's a little bit easier to break the edges before you put it in the actual kayak. And now I'm going to use a piece of blue tape on my drill bit here to mark the length of the dowel. And you want to drill a little bit deeper than the dowel is long, like maybe an eighth of an inch deeper. So. Go ahead and mark that. And next, I'm going to go ahead and put the deck beam in place. And this is one of the more frustrating things about dowel joinery like this is there's no real good way to hang on to this while you drill this first hole. And oftentimes, as soon as this drill bit drills through, it ends up moving this deck beam a little bit, which is not what you want to have happen. So that's just something that you just kind of if you do enough of this, you kind of get used to it and you kind of manage it, but it can be a little bit irritating when you're first getting started. And the other thing to know is that whatever drill bit that you're using needs to be just a fraction smaller than the actual dowel. Now with hardware store dowels, they're almost always undersized. And so you can get away with using a 1764. But for really good high quality dowels, I'm usually using one of the numbered or metric sizes that's just a fraction below an actual quarter inch. That way I've got a good tight joint. So now I've got one of my dowels here and I put the glue on it. I'm going to put this in place. Now, as you can see, um, let me turn the boat here. This thing actually slipped while I was drilling it. And now it's a little bit high on this side. Okay, so let's go ahead and sink the other pegs here. So 
So now that I've got this guy pegged in right here, I need to make sure that there's a way to keep it from spreading apart. Now in this case, it's not a big deal because it's already held by the rest of the kayak. But if you were building a deck, you need to have some way to resist this from opening up. Now when I'm doing this with mortise and tenon joinery, that's just as simple as taking an eighth inch drill bit and sinking a little eighth inch peg through the tenon. And then also there's, I need to stabilize the angle of the gunnel against the deck beam here. And normally what I do for that is just really quickly drill at a 45 degree angle and sink a quarter inch peg all the way through at an angle. And that's cool because it acts in both tension and compression to really stabilize this joint. Now in this case, because there's already two dowels down the middle of this, we can't risk drilling another big hole at an angle there for a peg. And so we use a different solution. In this case, what I do is I will drill down with a 3 16 inch drill bit and I'm gonna lash this down to one corner of the gunnel down here. And that's gonna act both to compress this so it can't spread apart, and at least in tension, it will hold the angle of the gunnels. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take a 3 16 drill bit right here and I'm coming about an inch, inch and a quarter in from the edge of the gunnels. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. And then I'm gonna come down to about in line with where the deck beam is down the gunnel. And you wanna be about, I don't know, five eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the gunnel. Go ahead and drill through. And I'll do that on both sides here. And I'm doing these kitty corner to each other because I don't want to introduce tension to flex the deck beam one way or the other. So now I'm going to go ahead and take an arm span of artificial sinew here. And I'm going to tie a little overhand loop just in one end and thread the needle on the other end. And I'm going to go down through the hole here. And I'm going to come around the gunnel. And I'm going to come back through the hole right here. And I'm going to come through this loop. And I'm going to bite it back onto itself like that. And I'm just going to reverse that routing. So around like this. And then up like this. And around like this. And up like this. And you can do that, I don't know, you can do it as many times as you want to do it. But I think if you've done more than four, you're doing probably more than you actually need to do. So, come out here, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap around both of the strands here, and we're gonna half hitch. And you see how that kind of compresses that lashing down in there? And that's what we're looking for. You don't wanna go too crazy with this, because you don't wanna actually change the angle of the gunnel in this area, but you do need enough compression that it's gonna be actually functioning to hold the deck beam into the gunnels here. Okay, do a little bit more of this. You know, you can do three or four half hitches around both these legs here. And then just to lock it off, you can half hitch it around one of the legs of this lashing, just to keep things from unraveling. And this is a very traditional Arctic kayak deck beam joint right here. Not the pegs, but the actual lashing. This is a really common lashing that you see on various Inuit kayaks. Okay, so that's it. Totally finished skin on frame kayak deck beam. Hopefully this video showed you some of the pros and cons of this kind of joinery. And if you're a first time builder, I would strongly encourage you to at least try to make your first kayak with mortise and tenon. I know it's a little bit intimidating, but once you get used to the process, it's almost as fast as building with pegs and butt joints, and you end up with a much stronger finished product. Now, having said that, I'm also a huge proponent of doing whatever works for you. So if you don't want to deal with mortise and tenon, by all means, peg that sucker together, go paddling. All right, I think that's all I have to say for now. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Maybe hit that like and subscribe button. Think about heading over to the Cape Falcon Kayak website, see what I got going on there. If you're watching this on the Cape Falcon website, good luck, have fun building your kayak, and be safe on the water.